Thank you so much. Um, I'm going to try to talk slowly because uh, people are typing, and um, that's a really good thing. Um, but but it, you've all had your snack, and so it's really quiet. Uh, it's nice and cool here. There's, if you like, just take a nap. Um, uh, but if you're, if you're, if, how many people here might be localizing? Yeah, yeah, oh my gosh, wow, okay, okay, well, um, I hope that I can provide some value here. Um, so, there we go, localize the docs. Uh, first, why should I be talking to you? I don't know, they picked me. Um, but uh, my experience, professional experience, I've had many years as a professional Japanese translator, uh, an editor, a uh, technical writer, a uh, localization engineer, uh, and a developer. And so from, I, I fell into localization like everyone else does and learned lots of things, especially what not to do. Um, so let's just go right into the deep end and uh, um, yeah, it's another language. <laughs> what's, what's happening here? Um, so when we talk about localization, that's really shorthand for uh, several, four domains. Uh, and it's important to understand what those are and what their distinctions are. Um, we have globalization, uh, lo uh, internationalization, uh, localization, and translation. Uh, and uh, I'm going to get to those in a, in a bit here. Um, but the reason we care about these domains is uh, because they cover different aspects of the overall localization uh, process. So the, the globalization uh, domain is addressing business concerns, uh, the business case. Uh, international, internationalization uh, addresses product infrastructure. Uh, how is your code structured? How are your resources uh, yeah, uh, uh, structured? Uh, localization is about process, and uh, translation is, uh, ultimately comes down to the competency of uh, the translators and service providers. Uh, so with globalization, um, uh, we're concerned with these questions. Uh, can we profit by entering a specific market? Uh, what is the current internationalization and localization state of the product? Uh, what resources must we deploy to achieve our goals? And how long, how long will it take to get to market doing localization? And what's the expected ROI? Uh, on the internationalization side, uh, we're concerned about uh, is the code, because um, we're talking about software today, so that's a caveat. Uh, is code structured to support localized resources? Uh, can the UI handle localized presentations? Uh, how efficiently can we deploy localized resources? Uh, is refactoring necessary? And if so, how much? Uh, and uh, are localized components testable? Uh, on the localization side, uh, we are looking at, uh, have we identified our domain-specific term terminologies? Uh, you, you've got product terms, there's terms about uh, your particular field, what have you. Uh, is doc content written in global English? Uh, that is, is it something that a non-native English speaker could read and understand and, and render that in their native tongue? Uh, are images localizable? Uh, this is a big bugaboo, believe it or not. Uh, do we have a competent, capable service provider, service partner? And uh, how efficiently can we round trip content? Uh, and with translation, uh, we're looking at uh, what languages and locales we should support, of course. Uh, do we have access to enough competent translators and reviewers for each lang language locale? And do translators and reviewers have sufficient technical competence? Um, they need to be adept at translating, of course, but also they need to be able to um, handle the, the subject domain. Uh, and so when we're thinking about translating, we do uh, uh, what can be called a guilt assessment to cover these domains. And through addressing the questions that arise from addressing, the, looking at these domains, we can find possible bottlenecks, the hidden internal costs, uh, potential ROI, and uh, the, the feasibility of the project. Uh, so 
let's see, let's look at how we would go, maybe a, a high level view of how localization works. Uh, any footy fans here? Yeah, okay. Um, first of all, you're gonna need a localization service provider. And um, they're really and truly, people talk about partnerships a lot in business. And, they really are your partner. Um, you will rely on them. You need them uh, because uh, they should have expertise and uh, you probably don't. Um, and that's why we pay them. Uh, and so a good LSP, will, will, you, they will be a cherished friend and a not so good one will cause you unhappy feelings. Um, so uh, the, the, a localization service provider, uh, they offer, uh, these, typically offer these kind of services and uh, advantages, uh, experienced industry professionals, uh, guidance on best practices, uh, modern tool systems, uh, uh, vetted translators and reviewers. Uh, they do project management for you, and uh, hopefully they get, with their modern tools, they also provide reporting capabilities where you can very quickly uh, assess um, uh, the, 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 uh, how many words are in a project and what state that is and, and make an, assess, uh, an estimate of time and cost and whatnot and manage other projects that you might be sending out. Uh, and they also provide general handholding. Um, so how do you choose an LSP? Well, I'm not gonna tell you who to choose because one, no one, none of them are paying me. Um, but, uh, and, and, your, and your, your case is gonna be specific to your organization. So, but I would recommend, especially with software uh, translation, that uh, you find an enterprise scale organization. Um, uh, whenever to localization comes up and it's sort of on the, oh yeah, well, my, um, my colleague's partner does translation for X language, um, not, probably not the best idea. Um, as we, translation involves, or localization involves way more than translation. Um, enterprise scale, they've got the resources, the tools, uh, expertise and whatnot. Uh, again, yes, domain expertise. Uh, they've handled many types of source formats, uh, many types of tool chains. Um, they've done this for years. They know how to help you out. Uh, accessibility, and by this I mean they should be available. If you're using someone on the other side of the world and you've got to set up a midnight meeting or I, I don't know, there's, if, if you can't get a hold of them when you need them, then that's going to cause problems, especially when an issue comes up. Um, so the more readily available they are, the better that's going to be for you. Uh, as far as features and services, it really can't, th that's really has to do with what you have identified on your side to be able to find an NLSP that can fit for you. Um, it's just too broad to cover in 30 minutes. Um, but uh, here the, there is a list of, uh, the, the annual list of the 100 largest LSPs um, and there are the name players are on here. So uh, you could access this list and find and start you know, pulling, the, pulling the thread. Um, so this is what a localization workflow, uh, modern software workflow would look like. And um, I don't expect you to understand what this slide is right now. I'm gonna show it to you again in a second. Um, but we have client resources, we have some kind of tooling, and we have the LSP. Uh, so on the client side, uh, you provide the resources uh, to, your, to your LSP. And these are your source files, which could be data, markdown, properties files, PO files, what have you. Uh, terminology lists, um, these include product names again, domain terms, uh, um, uh, uh, terms not to translate, what have you. Anything you want treated specially. Uh, source publications are very helpful. Uh, in English, a, a complete publication, because the translator can refer to that when they've got a question about a sentence somewhere. They can see it in context, and that helps them to pick, make the right word choice. Um, well, if, if, you're, if you haven't translated yet, you're not gonna have translation memory, but once you get going, you will have that, and, and you would want to, um, you could, they could manage, the LSP could manage that. It's probably best if you get a copy of that for yourself, but you want that to accompany your translations. Uh, with the tooling side, uh, the industry uses uh, XML-based tools, and they're all standardized um, under the hood. So there are different proprietary products, but under the hood, we're using the same standards. 
Um, and, the, and the general process, uh, there's other details, but the general process is uh, you run it through a tool system, it parses the source files, uh, creates segments at the sentence and phrase level. And then we find the segment matches in the translation memory, if there are any, or there might be partial matches, but we, we link them up. Uh, and then we create an intermediate representation of this data, the, the strings that need to be translated, any associated translation uh, memory with that. Um, and we parse that data to, uh, we can use that to calculate uh, costs and, and make estimates and, what, and other reports. Uh, and then route that data uh, in that intermediate state through uh, to the LSP and whoever needs it downstream. So uh, standardization, the, the, the usual formats, uh, the segmentation is handled by uh, an SRX files, uh, segmentation rules, um, just regex patterns that uh, can uh, split strings down to, to reasonable, whether it's sentence or phrase level. Uh, translation memory, um, it's uh, where we have a, so we're, it's just a flat file format, XML, uh, where we're uh, maintaining a record of tra uh, translation associations with source uh, strings. Uh, and XLIF is that intermediate representation I was mentioning, um, where the, uh, we put all of that together as, as a set of files, and then those get routed through uh, the system and can be sliced and diced and used however they need to be. On the LSP side, uh, you will have a PM, the project manager, and that's your main contact, that is your best friend, and um, they organize the jobs, they set up the schedules, they give you quotes, uh, and they, 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 they should be looking out for your best interest by raising questions that you might not have thought of. Uh, your PM will uh, distribute the content to, uh, your, your PM is managing the stable of translators, and so the PM will distribute the content out to the translators, however many might happen to be working on your project. Uh, the translators use IDEs, uh, similar to tech writers use Oxygen, Xmetal, uh, developers use Eclipse, IntelliJ. Translators have their own IDEs that, that function very similarly. Auto-completion and, and helps them to uh, be as efficient as they can. Uh, so they do work, they, that's where the, the, uh, they're working on the XLIF files through their IDEs. They send that back to uh, the PM aggregates the, the uh, returned uh, translations. Uh, they, if, you've, if you're paying for this service, they'll send it out to reviewers and um, they'll review the content in the iteration there. Uh, and then the completed approved content is uh, then again integrated. Uh, tools trans uh, generate the uh, translated source files and you receive these as deliverables. Uh, so look, we can look at the, the same image again and um, uh, the arrows go one way, and then you flip it, and the arrows go back the other way. Um, I didn't make another picture with the arrows, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, also, by the way, this is a really bad example of an image for localization. Um, one, it's rasterized, uh, and two, um, all of these labels in there are liable to blow up their bounding boxes. This is, this is because in different languages, words can expand significantly. And th this is, yeah, this is a bad example here. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'll do better next time. <laughs> uh, so you've heard about automation and tooling, so some of you might be thinking, oh wait, we could do machine translation. And yes, yes, that's possible. Um, but we do have to temper that with, um, uh, that machine translation requires consistency. Uh, one of my favorite uh, tech-related aphorisms is that computers are dumb and humans are lazy. And from there come many problems. Uh, language is one where we do a tremendous amount of inference, and unless we've got metadata associated with our, our digitized language, the machine is just gonna do something. Uh, so consistency is intentional and rules-based. That's how we know what to, that's something to do. And if your content wasn't created with MT in mind, your writers weren't thinking this will be translated someday, um, it might not be a good fit. Didn't say no. Um, so whenever we talk about localization, folks get excited about the costs. And so um, 
uh, as a translator, uh, oh, it was tough. It was tough. I had to get out of that space. Um, uh, 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 folks always want the lowest price, but uh, well, um, we're, we're doing technical translation, and most, I think many of us are working on fairly complicated, uh, uh, complex uh, products uh, and technologies, and um, we don't know the target languages that those are going to. Who knows what our customers are gonna be reading? Um, I would prefer that my customers can actually use the product and not get angry. Uh, localization is expensive, and uh, if, if you spend a lot of money and you still end up with angry customers, well, that's not a lot of value. So um, penny pound, or was it penny wise, pound foolish? Yeah, that's, I think that's something to be careful about. Sue, so, um, these are just ballpark general market rates for technical translation. Um, there's, there's going to be different rates out there and different players, but this just um, gives you a general idea of what the market might look like on a per word basis. Um, some language, the, the, the costs per language, they're generally priced per word, and they're just going to be about uh, how many, is there a supply of translators? Is there, what's the demand like, and how does that all match up? And, and there, yeah. Um, so the, uh, we, because we're using automation and tools, um, the, you know, the first pass will be all new content, but subsequent uh, translation jobs, we get to, to take advantage of reuse. So um, those costs that we saw per word, when we, when we start to combine previous jobs with the, uh, or the, the translation memory from a previous job and creating new jobs that are building upon that, um, we can leverage that memory. And so uh, we, can, we can leverage the matches. And so the, uh, the pricing is generally um, percentages off of the, the per word rate. And so uh, we have different types of fuzzy matching. Um, there's a leverage match where, where it seems to fit. Um, even non-translatable is a 10% charge. Now, and this is all because unless there's an exact match like across the whole document, um, the translator still has to look at this. They still got to spend their time and click some buttons and it might take them a couple of seconds, but that's time that they're spending uh, on, on, um, on the translation. Uh, so uh, in addition to the per word bits, there's also uh, project-based fees. So uh, there's a PM fee usually of five to 10% for the, for the whole of, of, the, of the price for, the, uh, the, for that job uh, you know, on top of that, plus uh, maybe desktop publishing or engineering. It depends on if they've got to do any kind of tooling or whatnot special for you, and that's going to be dictated by what your content is. Um, the minimum fee, oh okay, yeah, rush jobs and minimum fees. Um, it's good to plan ahead uh, and not turn in the two strings that were late and say, oh, I need these in like three days, because uh, they'll do it, but um, uh, the minimum fee is uh, like $100, so you could translate 25 words and spend $100 on that. Seems expensive, but but in, a, in this large enterprise scale automated system, you have a lot of players that are involved in, and just to send a job has a baseline cost. Um, so planning is planning's good. Uh, Time-wise, uh, the automation, of course, increases the velocity so we could uh, be, you know, be as fast as we can be and efficient. Uh, on the other, at the same time, the more translators, the larger an agency, the bigger stable they have. It's just a brute force problem. They can distribute, uh, again, the XLIF files and have more bodies working on it at the same time. Uh, your LSP is motivated to deliver as quickly as possible. Um, and uh, they've been doing it a long time, so uh, their estimates are pretty good. Um, so you should trust them. And uh, uh, I, I worked for a person when I got into this space uh, who, his, he was a manager who, he was fired. He had our company fired by three different LSPs because he'd get the estimate, which would say two weeks, and so he'd start calling after one week saying, are you done yet? Are you done yet? Are you done yet? And it drove them crazy, so they said, we'd rather not work with you. Um, so actually, the, 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 you, if, you are, if, you, if it is your honor to be the gateway between the LSP and your organization, and your LSP is good, and they're your friend, um, you will want to uh, help out your friend by when others from your internally are coming to you saying, is it done yet? Is it done yet? You, you want to you calm them down, make them feel comfortable, but you don't want to be on the phone or is it done yet to your LSP because their estimate is pretty accurate. Um, 
and again, that's, what the, that's when you develop a relationship with a good LSP, and uh, I've had that fortune. Uh, so in general, when you do a, a few hundred, uh, you know, hundreds of words, it's going to be a few days. Uh, if you've got thousands of words, maybe it's a week, a little over a week. If you've got ten thousands of words, tens of thousands of words, it'll be a few weeks. Um, that's just a ballpark. I don't know your content, so um, uh, I have no idea where we are on time. Oh gosh, we've got lots of time. Yikes! Oh no. Um, <laughs> I didn't bring my saxophone. Yeah. <laughs> don't, don't do that, don't do that. Um, I'll say, so I'll touch on some internationalization issues that uh, um, uh, as a docs, uh, if, if you're thinking about documentation, uh, so uh, there are indeed internationalization issues with doc. Um, and so uh, is your, uh, are your content files separated from your tools, for example? And, I inherited a doc system where this was not the case. Uh, this made it very difficult to uh, take, get the source files that I need to send to the translator and not send the tools also. Um, I fixed it, but it was, yeah, the, 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 you, it's about separation of concern. So that's, you, you'll have to look at your own content and keep that in mind, that you, you want to be able to uh, get the source files out and get them back, uh, the translated versions back with as least trouble as possible. Um, so likewise, are your con can you separate your content files uh, by language? So when you run a build, you have your Japanese build, your English build, and, and whatnot. And that, that, so your, your tools aren't, let's, because this legacy line did this, they had the tools duplicated. <laughs> it was a doc book content set managed in Git, and then the tools were replicated, like jars and whatnot, four times. <laughs> in each language. <laughs> oh, and then there'd be an issue with, the, with say, the Korean. And so, we, oh, well, we got to fix that in the make, fi make files, make file there. But they didn't fix it because you're, so now you're managing four build systems with, I mean, essentially, with four doc, or source. Yeah, this is, this causes problems. You must clean it up. Uh, diagrams and screenshots, as I alluded to before. Um, if you've got textual information in your image, uh, it is uh, by far, you would, would uh, I recommend uh, 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 SVG, uh, vectorized graphics. Um, those are uh, behind the graphic, I mean, those you know, vectorized graphics can change with the, with the, uh, uh, by their size, of course, but the, um, their XML uh, underneath and the text segments are, are fairly easily identifiable in the XML. So so uh, a translator would just see the text part and change the text to the language, and then the, it, it makes that fairly simple to translate. Um, again, the caveat being that even using a vectorized format, that you want the um, bounding, if you have bounding boxes, you gotta be careful of that. So don't put a little bubble, because it'll probably put it above the bubble or this sort of thing. Um, diagram, and those are diagrams. Screenshots, that's a choice. So. Um, <laughs> I hate screenshots. Uh, <laughs> I'll do anything I can to avoid screenshots. <laughs> or automate it even, yes. Um, but you, the more screenshots, you go, those are rasterized. And that's, you've got to make a choice. You're either going to have your screenshots in English for all of your stuff, or if you want to really be clean, then you're going to have to take those screenshots in, um, uh, 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 in each locale of, of that app. Now, with the web app, maybe you can use, um, uh, darn it. Um, uh, somebody knows the name. Um, yeah, Selenium. Yeah, you could use Selenium. Right, right. Yeah, you could, do, you could probably do that, um, but you, then you have to have IDs. There's work to be done. At any rate, you, you want to look at your images for these things. That's where you're going to have internationalization issues. Um, and like, yeah, again, the terms and the names. So, oh, good Lord. We <laughs> I had a product where the, ter they, they, <laughs> the company rebranded the entire company and the products. <laughs> And so we had to go in and change the names, and then they changed it back. <laughs> so it would have been a heck of a lot easier if that name was in one place, and then using you know indirection to refer to that in documentation. But live and learn. Um, so uh, whether it's yeah. So w w if you're yeah. 
you're gonna look at terms and names because those are things you're gonna wanna treat specially in translation and you know your product better than I do, uh, but that's where an internationalization concern might come up. Uh, and on the developer side, of course, that's, there are loads of internationalization issues there. Plenty of products were created um, and no one gave a single, th what, we're gonna localize, huh? Yes. People speak languages other than English? Um, are the strings abstracted from the code? When you wrote those error messages, are they just right there? You know, I did try, I did accept, I raised my exception, I popped my message and it's like right there. Um, hmm, that's not good uh, because how do I get that message out of your code? There are ways, but it just creates overhead. If uh, we use something like property files, um, then that's very portable. We can just send that and put that back in, um, fire up a localized instance, good to go. Uh, string fragments are, uh, can be very treacherous because the grammars of different languages are different. Did I just say diff? Sorry. Um, so what looks perfectly fine to our native English speaking eyes, what have you, uh, is not going to render in another language. Uh, and that might be because, um, uh, like I can speak for Japanese, that uh, there are no plurals in Japanese. Uh, that's something that's inferred. Uh, Japanese is a uh, subject object verb pattern, whereas English is subject verb object. And so when, if you take a fragment and then you tr try to render that, in tr it doesn't work, it doesn't, it doesn't look the same. Uh, likewise, was there a review? Did the, string even, did the string even make sense to a user? Or maybe we should review our strings. Uh, take care with variables. So if it's, uh, you know, programmers, we love using variables, but if we put that in a string, now that string might get reshaped by the target language and it doesn't make any sense. Uh, and then you've got languages like the, um, you know, uh, French and Spanish and whatnot, they've got masculine, you've got feminine, and so the, how do you adjust for that when you've got a variable here? And, um, there, there are linguistic problems that can occur with the way that the strings are formatted. Uh, d dates, times, numbers, currencies, these can be f formatted in different ways for different languages. Um, it's hard to believe that in, I mean, for, for, I'm an American, so it's like, why would, why is there a period where the comma should be on the 10,000, you know, the, well, someplace different. Um, these are, we have to think about these things when we, um, we, we want to localize. And again, the UI labels, that these things can explode, um, not just in your diagrams, but also in your UI itself. Uh, you have this lovely title. Maybe you've got a two-pane, two-column uh, format, and then the title of this one, they fit nicely in English, and then bam, it's overwriting, your label's now overwriting its neighbor. Um, so that's a, that's a UI design issue, but that's, uh, and that's, that's part of the internationalization problems. Um, I think we're good, yeah? Great, so the takeaways, because I don't expect you to remember all this stuff. Uh, partner up with a good, reputable LSP. Um, I mean, I really mean it. They are, they, it's a partnership, uh, and um, a good LSP will make you very happy. Uh, do a guilt, you will do a guilt assessment. It doesn't have to be fancy, but to, to look at all these things we just talked about, there are, so many gotchas and hidden costs that uh, we don't think about until when they show up. And um, then that just drags down, well, we can't move as quickly as we can. Oh, I didn't think it was gonna cost that much. Oh gosh, we've gotta refactor our code. Do we have engineers to do that? Or are they too busy? So many things that can come up. Uh, and so it's better to try to look at the domain, all the domains that are involved to suss that out. Uh, and expect to pay market rates. I uh, can't emphasize this anymore. You get what you pay for, penny wise, pound foolish. Um, a good partner is worth, like you're worth, we're all worth probably more than whatever they're paying us, right? Um, they're also worth what, what we pay them and, and uh, it's uh, kind of a quid pro quo, we get, we get that back. So um, uh, be careful of uh, you know, trying to get the cheapest, cheapest yet, so it'll, it'll bite you later. Um, there are additional resources I've posted, uh, and um, uh, GALA is the Globalization Localization Association. It's an industry group. Um, there's uh, some courses that are uh, Google, LinkedIn. Uh, you can learn stuff. Content Wrangler, uh, Globally Speaking is a podcast. Um, 
I've put this slide deck, uh, it's an HTML presentation on uh, GitHub, if, so if that's the, uh, that's my GitHub, if you care, and uh, thank you so much. <laughs>